Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for being here. What a year. A, a project with a weird sounding name comes up 13, 15 months ago, and now we are celebrating one dot release. Congrats for the dev community for pulling this off. I work for eBay, and uh, one of uh, our primary mission at eBay is to let people do some of the base, one of the basic things that people do, which is buy and sell. We have uh, one of the largest uh, e-commerce sites on the web today. We have over 800 million products that you can search for any time of the day. Over 25 million active sellers and 157 million active buyers. What this means is that we have a tremendous set of infrastructure that we have been building over the last several years, and we have iterated, iterated on those many, many times. For example, our developers write over 10,000 apps that get deployed hundreds of over hundreds of times a day. Completely monitored, automated, deployed through the stack that our team provides at eBay. We have over several hundred thousand compute, both virtual and physical, uh, provisioned and automated, petabytes of petabytes of data, a large search engine that part of it runs on Hadoop, to process all the listings of our customers. And we were proud to be one of the largest OpenStack deployments on the globe today. Uh, we were the finalists for OpenStack Super User Award at the Vancouver Summit a couple of months ago. And uh, what is more interesting for me and my team at eBay is that there is a lot of platform diversity for a variety of applications. It's not one kind of applications. There are many types of applications that we end up supporting in eBay. To pull this off, we started with uh, some really fundamental principles that we take it by heart, we preach and practice every day. One of which is self-service. We want to see every piece of infrastructure in our data centers be programmable and be offered to our customers, our developers, through APIs. Multi-tenant and secure available and resilient. And the reason we are so big on OpenStack and Kubernetes is because we are a firm believer in open source as the way to innovate behind really standard interfaces. But here's something we learned out of following these principles, in particular self-service. Self-service is really awesome when it is offered through a standard API at the right level of abstraction. And when it is not at the right level of abstraction, our developers are not really going to be very productive. A great example is a VM. A VM is a very ephemeral ex abstraction, and it, it is something that fails. Rather, self-service succeeds when those abstractions are durable. And that is something, a valuable lesson we learned over time at eBay. And that's why we're excited to be here to take the next step towards more durable abstractions. So we have, uh, we approach infrastructure and platforms with a two-pronged strategy. At the bottom of the stack, what we call are the composable and programmable primitives. This is what is typically called as IS layer with every piece of infrastructure in the data center offered through APIs that are self-service and stable. OpenStack plays a strong role in that layer. On top of which, we have been looking for and experimenting with different kinds of abstractions that are declarative and not imperative and constrained so that developers don't make mistakes in putting up applications using the infrastructure APIs closed loop and durable abstractions. So the, the, our goal is to make sure that the developers shift away from ephemeral abstractions that the IIS layer provides at any cloud provider, both on-premise or off-premise, and move towards things that are more durable, like, like a pod as an example of a durable abstraction, a VM is an ephemeral abstraction. So we're really looking forward to moving away from these lower level abstractions for our developers to these high level abstractions. This has been talked about many times today and, and Kubernetes is one of the first examples where we see these uh, abstractions getting solidified and standardized through really open APIs in an open source manner. And that is kudos to Google for pulling this off. So in the industry there is a lot of options today and 
on a typical day, our Twitter feed might look like this with all the icons and, and technologies out there. It is, it is uh, difficult to figure out what is working together, what is not working together. Uh, there are many uh, things that we need to experiment and learn to figure out what does it take to operate, what does it take to scale and secure, and what has been missing in the last era too is a, is, is a body where uh, these ideas can come together and, and work as a product towards a more cohesive, interoperable set of uh, a, a platform. And I'm really excited that eBay is going to be part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation from the get-go and, and evolve. Let us learn and experiment with Kubernetes and related technologies and be able to run all of our eBay on Kubernetes. Our teams have been experimenting and, and have we had some early successes uh, with Kubernetes in our data centers on top of OpenStack. And we are still figuring out what does it take to scale, what does it take to operate at a much, uh, much higher uh, so that all of our data center is able to, can be containerized. Uh, towards that end, uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, three areas where we would love to learn from the community, experiment, and contribute back. One is manageability. We, as a, one of the largest operators of infrastructure uh, in a private enterprise setting, firmly believe that unless manageability and, uh, is a feature, large projects like Kubernetes cannot succeed in, in an enterprise setting. So it takes a lot of effort to operate things at scale. And we constantly look for ways to simplify not just the, our developer experience, but also our operational experience. It should be effortless for us to operate large clusters of Kubernetes effortlessly. And the second point I want to make out is restraint choice and innovation. The more choice you bring into the platform, the more uh, fragility and options they can create complexity. The second thing we, really look, we are really looking forward to is scalability. Uh, unlike most other uh, uh, efforts in Kubernetes and container space, we are looking for running large cl clusters of containers uh, over 1,000 nodes in, in multiple availability zones in our data centers, which means that we got to be able to support uh, at that scale and be able to effortlessly operate and support heterogeneous kind of workloads, whether it's front-end, uh, the Elasticsearch, databases, NoSQL, whatnot. We want to be able to run all of those together on a single shared set of infrastructure. And, and this is something really I'm excited because we have not done this before. We have done this on non-containerized workloads running on hundreds of thousands of virtual machines, but we are now looking forward to do that on containers as well. Uh, third, without going, goes without saying, uh, we have a lot of synergies we are seeing between OpenStack and, uh, and Kubernetes communities. It's good to see Google be part of the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, I see Mirant is doing in, uh, some work. I see Red Hat being there in both uh, communities. And we want this to succeed as, a, as, as an industry because it makes our jobs easier so that we can run our workloads on-premise or off-premise when it makes sense. And that is something uh, I'm looking forward to it. And again, kudos to the community for the one dot early days. And hopefully in a future time, I'll come back with my team here to show our success stories on Kubernetes. Thank you.